motivation, inspiration. It's all bullshit without taking action. International best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, tough love, no BS, high performance coach with an attitude. Welcome to the Queendom, where we talk about proven strategies to scale your business and scale your mind for ultimate success. And here's your hostess, cash flow queen, Kenitra. Greetings and peace, family. We are here with another fabulous episode for you. We're finishing up the series on Kundalini Awakening. That's some uh, beautiful comments, beautiful energy, high vibration sent my way for this particular series. So that means that you all are resonating with what we have been talking about, which is absolutely fantastic. So let's get into the present moment here before we get going. Take a couple of deep breaths and honor the present moment that we're in. Honor the presence, honor the state, honor the breath, honor the life. So let's take a couple of deep breaths. All right. So as I am recording this, it is a beautiful Friday early afternoon. The birds are chirping, the sun is shining, people are laughing, people are smiling. So all is well. All right, so let's uh, do a little bit of review on the previous two episodes. The first episode that we talked about, we dived in and we explained the various major seven energy centers that reside within each of us. So those are our our seven main chakra centers. And we discussed those. And yesterday, in part two, we talked about taking all of the low vibration, low emotions, low programs, experiences, traumas that have happened to us. And I gave you a meditation slash ritual that you can utilize to eradicate yourself from all low vibration in an instant. Now we did talk about it takes practice, right? Can't go into the gym pump the weight one time and you're going to have muscles for life. It takes a continual practice to keep your your chakras clear and to keep your vibration high. So now we're mainly focusing in on the first three chakras. Again, those are the chakras that hold most of the traumas that we deal with. If this is your first time on the episode, You want to go back and you want to listen to part one and part two so that all of this can make sense for you. And you can follow the entire protocol to awaken your Kundalini. Now, what is Kundalini? We'll just review that here real quick. Kundalini, other terminologies, are are prana, chi, ka, ki, life force, sekhmet, It is an energy that sits at the base of your spine in a reservoir tank, if you will. And this energy can not only heal you from all illnesses, all ailments, physically, mentally, and emotionally, but you can raise the energy high enough within your energy field, within your body, to also heal others. So this is a powerful, powerful technology that each of us have access to. It's not just reserved for the rich. It's not just reserved for the elite. 
It's not just reserved for a uh, certain ethnic group, uh, a certain gender. Each and every single one of us have access to this powerful, powerful technology. So today we're going to talk about how diet and exercise play a key role in awakening this energy. Now, as most of you know, when I do choose to eat, I eat a vegan plant-based diet. Why do I eat a vegan plant-based diet when I decide to eat? Well, on the spectrum of the food chain, it's the lightest diet that you can have. Raw vegan is actually the lightest. So uncooked raw vegan is the lightest. Or you could even say liquidarian if you wanted to. Just juices, green smoothies, things like that. But at any rate, you get the picture. No animal products, right? Now, I'm not here to convince you of a diet and try to change your views. That's not what this is about. I could care less what you eat. What I'm sharing with you is a protocol that will allow you to be lighter. Why do we want to be lighter? Because we are light. We interact with light. And if the light, the energy, the Kundalini, the Prana, the Chi, the Sekhmet, if it cannot move within your vessel because your food is too dense, you've got too much dead flesh within your body, it's very difficult, if not impossible, for this energy to awaken. It's just a scientific fact. This is not Queen's necessary teaching, but this is science. Okay? So the lighter your vessel is, the easier it is for energy to move. It's just common sense, right? Common sense. So you may say, well, you know, I've been eating meat all my life. I just can't throw it away. I, I realize that. Food is an addiction. Food is an addiction. It absolutely is an addiction. Okay? Um, just to give you a few stats. 40% of Americans. 40%. That's almost half. Okay? 40% of Americans are obese. And they have chronic illnesses. And they have diseases related to food. Okay? These diseases are heart disease, diabetes, cholesterol, high cholesterol, and even cancer. All of these diseases are food related. So literally, the populace or 40% in America are eating themselves to death. So you may think to yourself, what does eating have to do with spirituality? I used to think that. <laughs> I used to think that. I used to think I can eat whatever I want. I'm still spiritual. And that's true. That's very true. You can still be spiritual and eat whatever you want. However, there's only a certain level that you will obtain by having dead flesh in your system. So maybe you say, um, all right, let me see how this Kundalini awakening works. Let me see if it's for me because I'm, a, I'm all about, here's what I'm all about. I'm all about testing things for myself. I don't like to take people's word, not even scientists, because they only have, you know, a small test group when they test things. They may have a thousand people in this test study. 
or 20 people in this test study. But if I personally wasn't in the test study, then guess what? It doesn't really apply to me. I can use it as a gauge. But at the end of the day, I use my own vessel as my testing ground, my personal testing ground. This is why when people ask me, well, do you think I should become a vegan? Do you think I should become, you know, a breatharian? Do you think I should come become a liquidarian, a raw vegan? What, what do you think? And I say, you know what? I could tell you what I think, but at the end of the day, the best evidence for you is going to be you testing what works best for you. So here's what I'm going to tell you if you are an avid flesh eater. If you're wanting to awaken Kundalini, you're going to have to move yourself. And it doesn't have to be permanently, but temporarily, so that you can see the evidence. You're going to have to move yourself off of dead animals. Period. You're going to have to move yourself off of dead animals. And I know, I know, I get it, I get it. There's diets out there, they got crazy diets out there right now. <laughs> crazy diets. Paleo, oh man, I look at a paleo diet plate and I almost throw up. Paleo, keto, Atkins, they don't really promote that anymore, you know, because he died of a heart condition. Duh. Um, they've got a starch diet out there. I mean, it's all types of stuff out there, right? But who won the Nobel Peace Prize for diets? The Nobel Peace Prize that was won for diet was no diet at all. No diet at all, meaning non-eating or limited eating, breatharian, yeah, inedia, eating little or none at all is absolutely the best diet. How do I know? I've tested it. That's how I know. So getting back to you, if you're a meat eater and you're wanting to awaken this Kundalini in you, you're wanting to tap into this reservoir of infinite energy that you have inside of you, you got to get lighter. You got to get lighter in your thoughts and you got to get lighter in the food that you consume. So here's what I recommend you do is to test it out. Maybe give yourself a week where you're not eating any animal flesh and you go through this protocol that I've been sharing with you through these episodes and see what it does for you. That's your best tester right there. I know what the result's going to be, but you have to have the proof in your own palm of your hands. Okay? So that's diet. I'm not going to beat that dead horse. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat it up, but you know, what I tell my, my health clients is look, I'm not here to throw my views on you or to try to pressure you to think like I think or to do things like I do them. All I can tell you is what has worked for me. What has worked for me is what I can tell you because that, that's my personal proof. So now you have to become a scientist in your own life and you have to decide what's going to work best for you. I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually writing a book right now around food, around diet, around exercise and spirituality all blended into one. And the biggest problem that I see on a global scale is that the mass amount of food that's manufactured on a global scale is manufactured with additives that are addictive. Very, very addictive. Almost to the point where you can, you can kind of put cocaine, heroin, and food on the, on the same addictive scale. There's people out there that can't go one day without having food. 
They can't go one day, 24 hours. 24 hours I having food. That's an addiction. We just got to be real. That, that's an addiction. Anything that you can't put down is an addiction, period. If you can't put it down, walk away from it, pick it back up whenever you choose to. This is why I'm so fascinated with living on prana and breatharian. Because not only does it discipline the body, and it is the healthiest diet there is, but it'll, it allows you to tap into this kundalini energy that we've been discussing at levels that I can't even describe. I can't even describe it to you. It's like trying to describe being in love. You can't, you can't really describe that to anybody. Like they have to experience it. It's an experience. It's not something that you can necessarily describe to a T. That's what this energy is about. So many people are chasing everything to make them feel good outside of themselves. And it never dawns on them. They never realize what they're truly chasing, this infinite joy, this infinite happiness, this infinite peace. It's right within each of us. It's right within each of us. And that just, oh man, it's just, it's mind blowing. It's, it's, it's mentally orgasmic to know I have this power. That's why I'm saying I can't describe it to you. I can only tell you what I did to get it. <laughs> so that's diet. Now, I also discussed in one of the other parts about the energy sitting between the hips, right? So it's at the base of the spine between the hip area down in, in that area, in the root chakra area. There are some exercises that you can do in addition to all the other things that we've discussed that can also help to start breaking this energy up and start moving it up the spinal column, up to the brain. Um, I have some breath work exercises and I have some Kundalini yoga exercises on my YouTube channel. And in fact, I have, it's a playlist. Well, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a playlist. Um, I'm trying to remember, did I put the Kundalini yoga videos in that play, playlist? But if you go to my YouTube channel and um, you look at the playlist Pranayam and look for uh, some Kundalini yoga videos, those exercises, and that breath work help to awaken this energy down there and, 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 and start to, to awaken it so, it so it can start moving throughout your body, okay? So it's not a, a necessarily a strenuous exercise. I'll, I'll tell you right now, um, one, one, one uh, pranayam that I do, basically... You're doing deep breathing, so you're breathing in through your nose, breathing out through your nose. But as you breathe in, before you breathe out, you're holding your breath. You're holding your breath, and at the same time, you are contracting the area. You know how you would normally go to the bathroom and urinate? You know how you push out that feeling to push out the urine? 
if you contract all of that, right, tighten it up as you hold your breath, that's an exercise, a strategy that will help you to start awakening your Kundalini. You can do this five, ten minutes a day. Anytime you're thinking about it, you can do it. Because all you're doing is, is, is manipulating the energy within you. But like I said, if you go to my YouTube channel, there's plenty more, you know, exercises there. Go to YouTube, type in Queen space M-A-A-T, Queen Ma'at. Channel should pull up. If, it do, if you don't find it that way, go to the website, thequeendome.com. Thequeendome.com. Click on the YouTube picture. It'll subscribe you to the channel automatically. All right. Now, I also promised to share some uh, different meditations with you, and then we're going to talk about sexual continence. Yep, we're going to get in and talk about sexual continence. But before we do that, there's a couple of different meditations um, that you also want to do. So as we did the process yesterday of eradicating ourselves from, you know, all those low vibration experiences, thoughts, and all of that kind of stuff, to keep, to keep the energy high, to keep the chakras clear, we have to continue the practice, right? So there's a, a micro, uh, microcosmic um, orbit meditation. You can just Google that and see what it is. It's kind of similar to what I just shared with you as far as, as uh, breathing in deeply and then holding your breath and contracting uh, your sexual organs, okay? So it's kind of similar to that, but you can Google it if you want to get more information on it. And then um, I do a meditation where I call it unconditional love, okay? And what, what, I, what I focus in on is I focus in on all of my organs and all of my energy centers. Like just here recently, probably over the last, um, I don't know, I would say um, two weeks or so, maybe going on three, I started back running. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been running like I used to, uh, I used to run track when I was in high school, right? So that's how long ago I was running, talking what over 25 years ago or so 20 years ago i'm not telling you my age nah i'm just teasing i could care less i've been here so many times i'm like a thousand and fifty <laughs> but anyway um i started i was walking i was doing a uh, pm exercise in the evening and i was walking and i found myself you know i was like yeah this walk is boring so let's speed it up so I started walking faster. And I was like, this is still boring. Let's, let's, let's jog. So I started jogging. I was like, let's speed it up even more. And I literally started running. And I was like, whoa. I have not ran. And I, I used to make up all these excuses about running. Oh, I don't like running. Running injures your joints. Uh, if you're a woman and you run, it, it, it messes with your sexual organs. I used to make all these excuses about running because I was just lazy and didn't want to run. So I've literally been running in my PM workouts. And I was like, this is absolutely amazing. Like, this is amazing. And I feel so good when I do it because I'm out in nature. And there's a, there's a trail that I run on. It's just full of, you know, trees and flowers and plants and just all this nature, all this prana energy. So anyway, getting back to the unconditional love meditation that I do, when I say I, I, I honor my organs, I, I honor my energy centers, the unconditional love, I just sit and I breathe deeply and I, I, I thank 
my vessel. I thank my vessel. I honor my vessel. I love my vessel. I say, I love you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you for sustaining me, for supporting me. I will give you the best nourishment that I know. I honor you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. I love you. That is my meditation. And what I have found is that as I continue that particular meditation, um, I actually did a post on this a few days ago. And I realized that I had no pain in my body. Zero pain in my body. I don't remember feeling like that as an adult. As a child, yeah, but I wasn't really, you know, conscious of it. You don't really think about pain as a kid, right? You're just a kid having fun. You know, you're supposed to still be a kid having fun, but, you know, <laughs> humans, they think they're supposed to be in adult land. No longer having any fun. Everything is serious. What do you mean, fun? <laughs> uh, so, yeah. I mean, zero pain in my body. Zero. Right now, zero pain in my body. And I know it has everything to do with my diet, my exercising. And my meditation. I know that. That's why I do it every single day. Because this feeling, again, hard to describe something that you have to experience. Okay? All right, so lastly, I want to wrap this up. We're almost at 30 minutes. Um, Lastly, I want to talk to you a little bit about sexual continence. I think I'll probably do uh, an episode just dedicated to this um, all by itself and bring in some, some science. You know, I know everybody loves science. Well, prove it to me. <laughs> Become your own scientist. But anyway, yeah, I'll, I'll probably do a whole episode by itself. But I'm going to touch on this very briefly because we're talking about awakening Kundalini. Um, and your sexual energy, your sexual energy is the most potent energy that you have. It is the most potent energy that you have. What is sexual continence? First, let's describe that. Sexual continence is pretty much in, in, in lay terms. It just means um, you're having sexual interaction with your partner, but you are not necessarily releasing sexual fluids or ejaculating. So you're, you're keeping those sexual fluids within your body and you're repurposing that energy because that energy is so potent. Think about it like this. When you are involved sexually, the body is so intelligent. It's so dynamic. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a piece of technology that we've never, we have not been able to duplicate. We can't duplicate the technology that the body encompasses because it's so intelligent. So when you're involved sexually with your partner, your body, it turns on these genes and these hormones to give the best from each and every single cell in your body through your sexual fluids because the body believes that it's about to create another life. So it's given the best of the best of the best. The creme de la creme. <laughs> no pun intended. All right. So now think about this. If you're just out there 
haphazardly just throwing your sexual fluids around any and everybody that will take it, what are you doing to your energy? How much waste are you throwing away that could be utilized for your own healing, for your own evolution, for you raising your own vibration and frequency. Think about that. And this is even if you're by yourself having a sexual interaction. Anytime you release those fluids, it's a waste. Now, am I telling you all to walk around here and be celibate? No, I'm sharing with you again information that you can utilize and be conscious about so that you can transform yourself to a regular average 3D human into a 5D meta human. That's what I'm sharing with you. So these are things and tools that we can utilize again to tap in to this infinite energy that's sitting and waiting for us. I don't know if you've ever read the book Think and Grow Rich, but in Think and Grow Rich, there's a full chapter that's dedicated to sexual continence. Transmuting the sexual energy back into the body, allowing that energy to rise up through the spinal column to the brain, giving you <laughs> phenomenal types of insight. It's in the book, Think and Grow Rich. Countless other books as well. But that one is peeking out at me, so I figured I would mention it. So these are things to think about, right? So your diet plays a key role. Your exercise plays a key role. Your meditation plays a key role. Transmuting your sexual energy plays a key role. All of these things that we've been talking about, they all work together. Now, I do want to make mention because someone had asked me about, um, I'm going to make mention to this, then we're going to stop. We're over 30 minutes now. Um, someone asked me about um, psychedelics, ayahuasca, mushrooms, and all of these different things uh, where people, you know, go to these retreats and they um, take these psychedelics to have these Kundalini awakening experiences and what I thought about it. Uh, I say to each is their own. For me personally, I am the type of person that I want to do everything uh, in a natural state and let it naturally come to pass. I don't want to force anything. You may have heard some experiences where people, you know, did these things and they forced the Kundalini to rise. And because their vessel and their mentality was not mature enough to handle that energy, they had some type of problem. Either a mental issue happened after that or they had some type of physical problem. Because remember, remember this. The energy that I'm talking about, the Kundalini energy, the prana, the life force, the Sekhmet. This is real energy. This is real electricity. This is not some made up shit. This is real electricity running up and down your spinal column. It's real. You are a biomolecular machine. It's real energy. It's not something to be played with. So for me, I just, you know, I've never tried it. I, I never will. Because I know how to tap in. 
I know how to tap in mentally and then everything that we've been discussing, all of those things working together, I've had the experience and continuing to have the experience of awakening my own Kundalini just with my thoughts. Just with my thoughts. And to me, that's the way it should be. But hey, again, to each their own. So with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. We're going to go ahead and close out. Let me know if you guys have questions. You know, put your questions out there. I'll do my best to answer them. If you're listening to this on my YouTube channel, subscribe to the channel. There's going to be more and more and more and more content that I will be dropping that's going to help you go from the average mundane 3D human to the 5D meta super human. All right. So peace and unconditional love to you. Enjoy your weekend. Much love. And we will talk very, very soon. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe via iTunes and Google Play for upcoming episodes. If you're committed to scaling your business and life to the next level, book a free strategy session with Cashflow Queen Kenitra by visiting the website, nobscloser.com. Again, that's N-O-B-S-C-L-O-S-E-R.com. Again, visit nobscloser.com to book a free strategy session today.